excuse us. No, pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Just move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. Okay, so, we got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. This shit better be good. Let's hope so. Shh. The movie's starting. I am Dustin Goes to Hollywood. When you introduce me, could you introduce me as Mally? I sure can, Mally. And this is the Silver Linings Playlist. A podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's bleakest endings. And uh, as you can tell by uh, the episode title this week, we are of course talking about one of the biggest movies um, from last year, 2019's Joker. Um, This was, I mean, this was a movie, (laughs) certainly. It's definitely, you know what? Definitely a movie. I saw this in theaters, they pushed play, and it played all the way through. Yeah, no issues with yeah. sound or picture. No, nope, just, you know, it, it played, and then it was over, and then, yep. It's definitely a movie. It's, a, yeah, 100%. It might be the most movie movie we've ever movied. Yeah. Um, so. Thank you for tuning in, everyone. If this is your first time, first of all, thank you for joining us. Um, if you're returning, you already know what the deal is, but uh, if you need a reminder, what we like to do here on the show is watch movies like Joker that uh, don't end in your typical Hollywood fashion. There's no ribbon on the end of things. Everything's not bright and shiny. Sometimes things are a little dour. Things are a little unclear. Um, Things are a little crazy. This movie, I think, is kind of all three of those (laughs) uh, wrapped into one. And uh, we're going to talk about the movie, and then we're going to find the silver lining at the end of it. Something good and something positive to rank in from uh, all the chaos that happens in this movie. Um, so, Mally, uh, Joker, pretty big topic of conversation last year, even before it premiered, uh, or yeah. at least had its had its wide release. Anyway, um, why don't you tell me about the first time you saw this movie uh, and what your first reactions were coming out of the theater i mean you know i saw it in theaters as i think you know i assume you did as well and a lot of people Mm -hmm. did and you know it i it's a it's a fine movie like i don't hate it um i don't think it's like a i don't think it's a masterpiece by any means um the performances are great the score is phenomenal you know Mm -hmm. i enjoyed watching it I think all of that fucking talk about how this movie is going to cause rioting and violence was a load of bullshit because mm-hmm. none of that happened. Yeah. Um, at least not in regards, not because of this movie. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I th- this movie got a lot of hype for, you know, it was going to be the thing that caused the incels to rise up. <laughs> and it just no it isn't it's a fucking comic book movie about the joker like yeah. yes it's dark yes it's like a psychological character study like we've never seen a comic book movie like this really but calm the fuck down people <laughs> like it is not what everyone fucking said it was going to be it's just a fucking comic book movie yeah yeah i remember um before when this movie premiered like at the festivals and everything and the word was coming out uh i think the word people were using was uh this is a dangerous movie that it like yeah. you said it, it can in, certainly incite violence or inspire others to you know replicate what they see but i mean that's all movies for the most part you can't you can't blame one movie for <laughs> anything in fact i mean you look at the dark knight that inspired real life violence with uh yeah i knew you were gonna bring that yeah, up aurora but i mean i do remember that being like the the hearsay anyway and i went and saw this movie and i remember you know when it got to um the first time the joker kills somebody when he kills those three wayne enterprise guys i remember thinking you know i can see where these uh film critics and his reviewers would come up with something like that. Like, um, you know, that this thing could be a violent 
or you know inspire violence and everything. I could see where they were coming from, but at the same time, you know, it's it's a movie and it's about a character that you know this this whole like you said it's a character study of mental illness and of you know what happens when it's unchecked and you know that being said at the end of the movie i you know it's a movie it's a good movie it's basically taxi driver king of comedy and a few others kind of rolled into one um but you know at the end of the day it's just just a movie i don't <laughs> Yep, I agree. <laughs> My cat apparently it's, it's agrees a, too. It's a movie. <laughs> Do you want to talk about Joker? Oh, now you don't want to talk now that the mic's on you? Okay. <laughs> oh, I thought you were asking me. I was like, I mean, I don't really have a choice. You no, forced no, no. me to record this podcast. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if the mic picked that up or not, but as I was wrapping up there, my cat came in the room and uh, had a lot to say. And now that he's on mic, he don't want to say anything. So... Okay, and now he's leaving. <laughs> we all we all get nervous sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. Well. So, how did it do on this uh this rewatch for you? Like, what did it hold up? Did it? Did it you... was still a movie. It's still a movie. That, yeah. That we can say for certain. Um. Did your opinion change on it at all? Like, did was there anything new that you didn't see before? No. You know, I I watched it this morning. Um. And was like, you know, cool. It's a movie about the Joker. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I, I mean, I can I can already tell when we get into the movie that I'm going to be a little more gushy than you are. Because I do think this is a really good movie. Oh, I think no. It... I will say beautifully shot. Mm-hmm. Like, this is a gorgeous fucking movie. Um, directed well. Acted well. You know, the story's pretty good. Um, there is one big moment where the movie almost loses me. Um, yeah, as I, a, I have as a feeling a big, I know where, where you're you know, gonna. Any, anyone that knows me knows I'm a big Batman fan. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there's there's a moment where mm. I, I I think I can connect with you telepathically. I, I think I think. <laughs> I think it's the same moment for anyone who's a big like DC and Batman fan. Mm-hmm. It's just like watching this movie going, "Don't you fucking do it! Don't you sons yep. of bitches!" Yep. So we'll we'll talk about it, but for sure, yeah. I mean, it's it's a good movie. You know, I don't really have any issues with it. Um, it's not the best movie I've ever seen in my life or anything. You know, it's a, yeah. just a you know, it's a good movie. It's a great good character study of the Joker. You know, I agree. And well, well f- shout out like I love the fact that it's just a standalone thing too. Yes. Well, I have some info on that, and. Uh, and I be. bet I have info that <laughs> you might have better info. That. <laughs> you might have better info than me. But uh, before we do that, why don't we talk about the production, the awards, all the fun stuff uh, around Joker? So, as we said, the year is 2019. Director is Todd Phillips, um, most known for his uh, comedies, The Hangover, etc. Uh, the movie stars Joaquin Phoenix, Zazie Beetz, Robert De Niro, Brett Cullen. Francis Conroy, Douglas Hodge, Shea Wiggum, and Mark Marin. He Mark Marin got a mention on uh, Roger what Ebert's a website. Fucking cast, dude. Mm-hmm. Also, I love Shea Wiggum so much. That dude, uh, I, I mean, love when that dude <laughs> pops up and stuff. I it was funny. I I've seen this movie a couple of times now, but it's still fun. Like the surprise little roles that pop up. Like a couple of my notes are just like, oh shit, surprise Mark Marin. Oh shit, surprise Shea Wiggum. Like characters just kind of appear. Out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, Mark Marin is almost like it's more of a cameo, if anything. Like, yes. what, he has that one scene. Yeah. I would love to know, like, the last time we see him is him trying to get De Niro to cut the show early. I wish I could see just one shot of him during that uh during the chaos. During oh, the he pro- that motherfucker just probably sprinted for his oh, life. I, it's immediately. As soon as the gun goes off the first time, he's out the door. <laughs> um Movie had a budget of fifty five million dollars and it has managed to gross one point seventy four billion worldwide. So you'd call it a success. I'd say it's a it's a moderate <laughs> moderate success. Um currently though sits at a sixty eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Now, let's get into the awards and the uh, accolades. It's a little it's a little bit. I'm not gonna mention all of it, but I am gonna mention a good amount. So currently 
It's number 52 on IMDb's top 250 movies of all time. Um, really? It's almost in the top 50. So, 52. Um, it is the winner of two Oscars. Of course, uh, Best Performance in a, by a Lead Actor for uh, Joaquin Phoenix. And the Best Original Score. Do you know how to pron- uh, pronounce the uh, composer's name? Because her name is uh, a little I, difficult. <laughs> nope. I love her work on this movie. And I absolutely love her work on Chernobyl. Which apparently mm-hmm. she did both of those. Like She was like working consecutively like Mm. she would do like she would work on joker but then because she actually wrote most of the score for joker before they filmed yeah that seems to be a trend lately like well uh, hans zimmer did that with interstellar too yeah well he didn't write the whole score he wrote he got small motifs yeah um well it's apparently it's an inspiration from sergio leone um, who mm. always had his scores filmed ahead of time so that he could play them on set to get the right mood for scenes. So Make, makes sense, I guess. Todd if it, Phillips kind of took, out. yeah. Todd Phillips kind of took a note out of his book and had her compose, you know, music ahead of time, played it on set to get the right mindset. Um, so she was actually doing this in Chernobyl at the same time, and God, just that's impressive. Yeah, because both, pe- like both scores are just so fucking like probably my two favorite scores from last year yeah um this and chernobyl yeah chernobyl score is terrifying yes um but as much as i love her work i have no idea how to pronounce her name correctly (laughs) no uh we'll just go with her first name hildur um she's phenomenal um the movie was also nominated for nine other oscars uh, including Best Picture, Best Director, Best Adapted Screenplay, Best Cinematography for Lawrence Cher, uh, Best Costume Design, Best Makeup and Hairstyling, Best Editing, Best Sound Mixing, uh, and Best Sound Editing. Um, it also won two Golden Globes for Best Actor for Phoenix, and again, Best Original Score for H- uh, Hilder, uh, and Todd Phillips was nominated for Best, Direct- uh, Best Director at the Golden Globes. Um, plus, it's just an endless array of other awards that we're not going to get into. <clears throat> well, before we do that, before we really crack open this movie, why don't we uh, watch the trailer, um, which I think is a really good trailer. Um, and then, we'll, of course, we'll talk about that, and then we'll break Joker open and uh, let everything spell out. Arthur, does it help to have someone to talk to? My mother always tells me to smile Those fucking steps. and put on a happy face. Yeah, we'll talk about the steps. <laughs> she told me I had a purpose. To bring laughter and joy to the world. It's just me. Or is it love that shot. I love the how ominous that shot is. Oh, his, yeah. On his back. Boy, it's funny. So many, like, ominous foreboding shots in this trailer. In the context they're used in the movie, like, he's yeah. just, like, stretching his shoes. Stretching his shoes in that shot. Do love the little nod to the Dark Knight right there. If you Wait, which one? Uh, when he's in the elevator, there's a guy wearing the same nurse outfit that the Joker was wearing. When he goes oh, to see I never Martin. noticed that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's so funny? Freak! <laughs> Is it just... This movie Gotham has lost its way. Because of his big shoes or his walking Phoenix just not a good run. What kind of coward would do something that I mean, I think it's a combination of the it. footwear <laughs> as well as a character choice. True. I used to think that my life was a tragedy. It's a comedy. If you 
just Yeah, man. I mean, that's that's a, that's a good fucking trailer. Really good trailer. That's a great trailer. I mean, just everything is so on point there. It sets the tone, doesn't give away anything. The sound design, the the, the shot choices alone are are worth talking about. But man, great trailer. All right, um, where where do we want to start? Because this movie's got a lot going on. Um, I don't I guess, know. I assume you have notes, so I do. <laughs> um, so we're both, I think it's fair to say we're both pretty big Batman fans and therefore pretty big Joker yeah. fans. And yeah. then we've done the one Dark Knight us, on the show. One of us has a bat tattooed on their chest, so. Very, yeah, yeah, very true. Um, so how familiar are you with the, um, how the Joker is portrayed in the comics? Like, there's tons of various quote-unquote origin stories for him. I don't think anything's ever been... Um, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say I'm I'm gonna say I'm versed. I'm versed. Okay. Have they ever done uh, anything about like this laughing condition that he has in this movie, which is a real condition? Mm. Um, Not that I'm aware of. Now, I haven't been an avid comic reader in a few years now. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of my history or a lot of my knowledge comes from you know stuff I was reading. You know, God. Uh, you know, years ago, years ago. Yeah. So, <clears throat> excuse me. I could be talking out of turn when it comes to that, but as f- at least to my knowledge, I've never seen that done. Mm. I mean, it's like, pretty brilliant. The whole laughing thing being a medical condition. I don't recall that ever being a thing, but I could be wrong. So I did a little research um, about this condition, which is known as, I think it's pronounced pseudo-bulbar, pseudo-bulbar, B-U-L-B-A-R effect. Um, and yeah, it's pretty much just a condition where, you know, the person afflicted with it, it just laughs. It's almost like a tick, almost like uh, like an autistic tick. Like, you just laugh whenever, you know, it's maybe it's an inappropriate time, maybe you laugh a little too hard compared to what the situation calls for and it's i i love how phoenix portrays in this movie where it is you know when he starts his laughing fits he you know it's almost joyous and then it turns especially that first time you see him when he's in that social worker's office you can see just how miserable he is with it like it's a disease it's you know it it, oh yeah no when he laughs it looks physically painful it looks awful like i I couldn't imagine how much damage that just does to like his vocal cords over time and everything. Like it's got to yeah. be. It's just Now, all that being said, shortly after the release of this film, there was a video on the internet that I've never laughed harder at, but also at the same time been more uncomfortable watching. Someone took the scene where um he's at his clown office. Mm-hmm. Um, after they kind of pick on the short fellow, and then he like is walking down the hall laughing. Yeah. Someone took that and replaced all his laughs with Seth Rogen. Yes. <laughs> and oh my, it's so uncomfortable, but also so fucking funny <laughs> at the same yeah. time. It was weird. How do you, um, how do you feel about the, the laugh? Cause I know that was what Phoenix said was. One of the hardest parts of nailing nailing down this character is getting the laugh just right and making it unique to him versus like Ledger's or Mark Hamill. Yeah, I mean the I mean every live action Joker we've had. Um, I was about to say all three, then I realized, oh yeah, Leto was Joker once. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean they've all been very distinctly different. Um, yeah. laughs included. Um, I mean, his I is say, interesting. Just- as far as Joker laughs, I do got to say, I do love Heath Ledger's, I think, the mm-hmm. most. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just so evil. Um, yeah. This one freaks me out the most, though. Yeah, it <laughs> it feels distinctly not this character. Like, it feels like a secondary character, almost. Like, his laugh doesn't feel natural, and that's the point. But it also doesn't feel like it's coming from Joaquin Phoenix. Like, it almost feels 80-yard in just because of how 
different from his speaking voices and everything else. It's very unsettling. But I I do yeah. like I do like it a lot. I I agree that I think Ledger's is a little gets a little under my skin a little more. And then Mark Hamill is just just delightful for oh yeah for that character. I, I, I was just going live action Joker's, yeah. but yeah, Mark yeah. Hamill's is. I mean, top tier. Let's be honest. For sure, and you know, it's interesting too. This laughing condition. We all, we have covered a movie recently that briefly kind of dealt with this, um, with uh, the ending of Parasite. Uh, Kevin, you know, he suffers his head trauma, and he even uh, mentions yeah, that's right. that he's got that laughing thing. So I thought it was interesting that that we've seen this in two different movies uh, in just the past year alone. I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, I, what do you, you know, you mentioned this being a standalone thing, and I do think this movie is, stands, you know, head and shoulders above anything else, the DC, EU, whatever you want to call it, whatever they're calling it now. Um, I, I do think it stands head and shoulders above everything they've done. Now, there is talk of a sequel. No. Um, here, here's what I have, and then you no. tell me what you have. Okay. And we'll clear things up. Um, so yeah, it was intent, it was intended to be a standalone film, um, and it was going to launch Warner Brothers DC Black, um, like a, a line of comic books based off the DC universe that are much darker and more experimental, less focused on building a cinematic universe and more like these individual stories. Um, in August of last year, Todd Phillips said uh, that he would be interested in making a sequel depending on how well this movie performed and if uh, Joaquin was interested in coming back. Uh, but then he later clarified saying that it's not really meant to have a sequel, that he pitched it as one movie and that was it. Uh, but then in October of last year, uh, Phoenix apparently spoke uh, publicly about wanting to reprise his role as Arthur Fleck. Uh, and he considers it to be his uh, dream role and said, I can't stop thinking about it. If there's something else we can do with Joker that might be interesting, um, it's nothing that I really wanted to do prior to working on the movie, but it seemed endless. The possibilities of where we can go with the character. Um, and then November of last year, the Hollywood reporter announced that there was a sequel in development with Phillips, uh, and Phoenix attached. Um, but then, uh, deadline Hollywood said on that same day that that was false. Then they haven't even started negotiations into that. Um, so it's kind of been clouded in mystery of whether or not we will get a sequel based on just what Phillips is saying, what uh, Joaquin's saying, what the behind the scenes is saying. So what, what information do you have? Because I'm assuming See, you've got more current. The Joaquin comments, I remember reading about how he was like, you know, I keep thinking about the character, like, I love that character. But the comments I read, he also said, you know, would I do it if it was interesting? Yes. Do I think it's going to happen? No. Um, and then Phillips, mm-hmm. as far as I know, the rumors about a sequel, he completely were like, no, that wasn't true. He yeah. met with them to discuss doing similar, like do giving other DC characters, characters this yeah. treatment, not so much doing a sequel to this movie, yeah. doing spiritual sequels, like taking, I, this isn't you know, factually accurate or was never quoted as saying this, but like taking fucking killer croc and making Mm -hmm. a realistic character study. Yeah. Um, No, I mean, I, I'm fine if this movie never gets a sequel. I don't think we're ever, we're not going to see a sequel to this. We're not going to see this character like this incarnation of the Joker pop up. Like a bunch of people are like, Oh, what if he pops up as a cameo in the Batman, the Matt Reeves movie? It's like, no, it's not going to happen. Yeah, they that's again, that's DC is kind of doing batshit stuff. They there's just no failed, real their failed Justice League universe. Um, yeah, there's no the real Snyder plan cut coming out next year. We got the Batman, <laughs> um, the new TV show that they're doing for HBO. Yeah, around, that's, uh, that's tying into the Batman. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the Batman starting its own universe. Like, it's all just different movie which people are like that doesn't make any sense that doesn't make any sense and it's like no you guys are just used to the marvel format now yeah like i like you know it's like before marvel started their universe it was like 
we had um, not so much DC, but it's like we had a Fantastic Four universe. We had the X Men movies. Yeah, everything was separate. Spider Man yeah. was its own thing. Like, th- like it all like kind of makes sense when you remember. It's like, oh yeah, they did make comic book movies before Marvel. Yeah, <laughs> the, before Successful the Marvel universe, comic book yeah. movies too. And a lot of people like were those were those some of the best comic book movies? No, there are some gems in there. A lot of gems in there. Um, a lot of I mean, real bad ones, too. Yeah, I mean, hey, honestly, I have always kind of backed the first two X-Men movies. Like, I know everyone raves over X2. I don't mind X, the first X-Men movie. I like movie. the first one, too, a lot. I like it. And um, I like Spider-Man 1 and 2 Yeah, the lot. Rami Spider-Man movies, the first two, you know, just it's mm-hmm. those era of comic book movies dropped the ball in the third one. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's well, very except for I mean, Fantastic, even... except for Fantastic Four, they dropped the ball before they even had a movie. Got the out. first one. <laughs> Got I mean, the, even uh, the second one, dude. <laughs> yeah, even Burton's Batman, like the third when Schumacher came in, that's when they dropped the ball with those. With those. Well, you can't really call those Burton's yeah. Batman. Um, it's interesting dude, because I that love... was supposed to be. That was supposed yeah. to be Keaton. Again. I love the '89 Batman, and I love Batman Returns. I hold both of those in very high regard. Mm-hmm. Um, Batman Returns is such a good fucking Batman and then, movie. You know, obviously, um, Batman Begins, Dark Knight, even Rises. You know, Rises has a lot of problems. It's the worst of that trilogy, but it's still entertaining, mm-hmm. mostly. Mm-hmm. Um, that was its own thing. Like, you know, you can make movies that are that aren't connected to other movies. Yeah. That's something you can do. I would, it, I I I feel that I'm connecting with Phoenix on this, and I can't get this character out of my mind either. I mean, I am totally fine if this is a standalone thing and we never see anything else come of it, but I just would love to see what they do. I mean, it's hard because in this movie, Phoenix is at least playing someone in his mid to late 30s, at least, maybe right. even early 40s. And then, of course, we see Bruce, who's probably, like, what, 10, 11 in this movie? Maybe even younger than that. I mean, the ages went line up, but I would love to see what Phoenix does playing opposite a Batman. Because I feel yeah, like... but you can't... See, that's my thing. I know. It's not... Dude, it's not even the age difference. Like, a 40-year-old Bruce Wayne beating the shit out of a 70-year-old Joker. Hilarious. It's not mm-hmm. even the age thing that gets me. This is not the this is not a clown prince of crime. He is no. not a fucking criminal mastermind. No. Um that's why I think it would be interesting cuz like, like yeah, like you could maybe morph in morph him into some like sadistic serial killer, but I think that would take a lot away from the character. Um but like Batman would handle this dude in like 2.5 seconds well that's where i think you get the interesting part of uh like that something that you could make out of this because let's say let's say bruce in this movie is 11 and then let's give him 10 years and like age 21 he he becomes batman like a young batman that puts that puts phoenix in like maybe if you want to be conservative like mid 40s let's say that right so you got mid 40s joker early 20s batman I think it would be interesting to see because, you know, when we got the Nolan ones or even like the Keaton ones, it was like brawn versus brains. Like the Joker is the brains and Batman Wally is supposed to be both. And it's, you know, when you watch the end of the Dark Knight, it's them fist fighting one another. And, you know, obviously Batman gets the upper hand. But when I would love to see like a young Batman coming up against a mentally ill. So like this Joker doesn't have an agenda. Like he. Well, see, that's the thing, though. This. Brawn I don't want to. I don't want to master plan this, Joker. The, yeah, this. I I just don't see how that would work. Like, if we got like you would have to significantly significantly change the overall character of Batman and Bruce Wayne to mm-hmm. make a Batman work against this Joker. Well, like, and I don't think it's doable. I think you could do it. I just don't think it would be what people would expect like you know you've you've got one of joker's uh supporters whatever you want to call him killing bruce's parents again as we've seen multiple times in this movie um 
And That's then, my least favorite part of this movie. It's one of my least favorite parts, too. Um, but I think they should. I'm going to jump to that point real quick. They should have shown them walk out, and they mm-hmm. should have shown that guy mm-hmm. follow them into the alley. And that was it. And that was it. Yeah, Don't I agree. Need to, I'm so sick of seeing... The pearls in slow motion. Bruce and Martha get, or Thomas and Martha get murdered. I'm sorry. I'm sick of it. Yeah. It has nothing to do with watching people die. It has to do with watching people die. It's, I'm just, how many fucking times do I need to see Thomas and Martha Wayne get killed? Well, I would like it, you know, I agree with you 100%. We see them go down the alley and then we see the guy follow them. I do like that following shot, though, that's almost straight out of the 80s Batman. That's like, the really tall yeah. shadows on the alleyway. I do like that shot. Totally fine not seeing anything else after that. However, I do like whenever they show Joker laughing at the end and it cuts back and you just see Bruce standing there. I would be fine with just that shot too, but I don't need to see the physical bullets go in. Right. I don't need yeah. to see the pearls. No, I'm I'm fine with that last shot at the very end too. It's just the actual killing. I don't yeah. need to see that again. Like yeah. we know like you show them going to an alley, leaving Zorro. Mm-hmm. And you show someone following him, we know what's going to fucking happen. Which is sure. funny that this movie, that they chose to do that. Because this isn't like a, we're going to spoon feed you every little fucking thing movie. Like, mm-hmm. it's a well-crafted movie. So that was an odd choice where they're like, we need to blatantly show that Joker caused, like, his, the rioting that he inspired yeah. caused them to get killed. It's like, I, I kind of like that. Though. No, I kind of no, no, like I'm not, that. No, I, I have not. No, I'm saying they didn't actually. We didn't need to see no. gun shoot yes. bullet die. Yeah, we didn't. We need to didn't see that. need no. that. But see, this is this is my pitch then. Okay, for for a potential sequel. So just just follow me. We for are a not gonna agree on this. <laughs> That's fine. But I just want to get this out there. So you, we 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 have this movie. It exists as it is. One of Joker's supporters, whatever, sees. I mean, he ends up killing Bruce's parents. Flash forward ten years. Bruce has become Batman. He, you know, th- essentially that guy is the Joe Chill of this universe. In 1991, your movie would be taking place. Let's yes. keep that in mind. Yes. So he has to go old school detective work. He tracks down that guy, you know, gets information out of him. Why did you do that? You know, he's had 10 years to reflect on it. And that guy is going to, is, you know, at this point, probably a full blown Joker henchman dude. Like, I don't say I'm not saying the Joker in this universe even has henchmen or a plan or anything. He's probably just off, you know, he's probably still in the asylum if you believe the ending is the ending of this movie, like that it's factual, right? And then Batman finally, you know, makes his way, you know, why this happened to his parents and everything. He gets to Joaquin Phoenix, and Joaquin Phoenix is like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And this Batman for 10 years, Bruce, is. You know, it's been in his head that all these riots started because of this one guy. And then you find out that guy didn't even have an agenda, had no idea about that. You know, it's it's like this false prophet that all these people look up to Phoenix as. And then how does Bruce deal with that? Like, this guy technically is the reason his parents are dead. But at the same time, this guy's mentally ill. Um, You know, he had no... He wasn't trying to start violence and start riots. It was all introspective stuff that everyone else leached off of and use as that as an excuse to you know eat the rich take down the police etc like i think that's a really interesting way to do that like then you have a conflicted batman of like you know my whole goal was to stop criminals get you know answers to why my parents were killed blah 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 and then my end result isn't this big climactic showdown with this evil mastermind. It's just a guy who's mentally ill that's dealing with these internal afflictions and everyone else was using him basically as a prop and now like there's followers of his. Like I think that's a real interesting new Okay. Lane you could go down. I'm let not saying me, it's gonna me, be an action pack Batman me, movie. Yeah, let me poke some holes in your pitch real quick. Th- that's fine. Go you ahead. just wrote a lesser equivalent to Hannibal Lecter's role in Time to the Lambs. That's like yeah, that's five minutes of screen time. What's I mean, but that's the thing. What the fuck would the rest of like? What's the rest of the movie? Because all of that you could be you could handle that in five minutes of screen time. Well, I'm just looking at less. more like if if this movie is a character study of Arthur Fleck, his mental illness, um, how we treat the mentally unstable, social programs, etc. 
Batman, the sequel, would be, you know, what it's... I mean, you have to tackle some of the subjects we've seen before about, you know, what it's like to be an orphan and to be rich and to, you know... Like, all those things, of course, you're going to have to tackle. But then you have to deal with this guy who's my... Okay, I'm Batman. My agenda is to stop criminals, you know, keep Gotham safe and clean. But also, I've it's been eating away at me 10 years. What happened that night? Why did this guy do what he did? And then he, you know, your Joe Chills is like, oh, we did it because of blah, blah, blah. He makes his way to Arthur. And then you have to deal with that character study of my job is as Batman, is to clean up the streets of Gotham. This guy is one of the reasons why there's so much problem. Like, people look up to him, but then, of course, you've got Batman's moral code of, I can't kill anybody. So how does he deal with that? How does he deal with, this guy can't be around because it's ten years worth of trouble stacked on top of another. This this city is now corrupt more than it's ever been. And, you know, of course, you've got the mob angle like we did in the, the Dark Knight uh franchise and everything like i said i'm not saying it's like an action-packed heavy movie it's more of like self-introspection on the character of batman and he's got a villain that i don't think batman's ever had to deal with which is someone of course they're all you know mad scientist types but this is more like traditional mental illness brain trauma that has really afflicted this guy it's it's almost a pity story more than anything and you show the batman unraveling that and figuring things out like i said it's not a perfect pitch but i do think that would make for an interesting sequel to this it's something a little different it's not you know the dark knight times 2 you know it's it's something in a different path and again it's i'm not writing this movie i just think there's something there that you could definitely different mind. does not make it good I, I, so fair basically, enough, fair you enough. want to give Batman the Man of Steel treatment? Maybe. I I'm one you of the few people that how, likes Man of Steel. No, no, I don't care. I like Man of Steel. I don't want to see that version of Batman. I'm sorry. No, that's like, fine. I don't. I want to see more of a that, detective, self reflective Batman because we don't we didn't get a lot of that with the with the Nolan I mean, trilogy. Rumor has it that's exactly what we're getting out of the Batman. Which I Matt hope Reeves. is true because I'm um, very looking forward to that movie. See, I just I do not ever in any way see this Joker character working in an actual Batman no, film. No, 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 no. This character well, works in this movie mm-hmm. and I just Mm, I I can't see it working. That's that's totally fine. Like I said, I am okay with this being a standalone thing. Like, but that is only, an interesting. Like, unless it's a very small, weird Hannibal Lecter type role, but also that will completely rob us of the Joker. Like, you know, like we're not get like. Then that's the thing. Like, I don't maybe we need that though because we have been so self reliant on the Joker character for like a decade, like even longer. Like, there, anytime there's a new Batman movie, that's almost the first thing people ask is, is the Joker going to be in it? And like, he's right. a great villain, but maybe we're de- too dependent on him. Like, and have they even announced if there's a Joker in Matt Reeves? No, um, okay. there's been nothing. Okay. And and my argument to that is then let's just not do the Joker at all. Just leave it alone. I'm fine with that too. Like, just <laughs> d- don't even like, that's why I'm kind of psyched for this Matt Reeves movie is that, you know, we're getting the penguin. We're getting the Riddler Catwoman, potentially, potentially a Harvey Dent S character. Mm-hmm. Like, and we're, you know, we got Carmine Falcone coming back, um, played by, um, John fucking, Turturro, right? Yeah. Which I'm psyched for, and, you know, like, let me get that long Halloween-type story. Like, that's the shit I want. I want a detective Batman. Yes, me too. Like, (laughs) like, you know, and we got some of that in Batman Begins, a little in Dark Knight. A little, a little. Um, But, you know, just leave the Joker out of it. It's fine. fine We don't need him. Well, interesting, you know, that we say that this version of the Joker couldn't go up against a batman pretty much at all where do you sit on the theory that this joker is not the one that we come to know as quote-unquote the joker in the batman world like there's this theory that you know people are saying this isn't supposed to be quote-unquote the joker this is the guy that inspires 
the person that will eventually become the Joker. I you heard think this? that's, yeah, I just think that's people being like, you know, now we have a way to incorporate this character into future movies. Yeah. That's, that is like their back door. I mean, yeah. I think Phoenix himself has come out and said that that's bullshit. Like that he thinks this is the guy, which again, I, I like that definitiveness. I, I, I just can't imagine. I mean, look at the ending of this movie. This guy that's propped up on top of this broken down police car smearing a forced blood smile on himself when and just surrounded by a sea of people like this is the guy if this isn't the guy no one is right exactly you know i i don't i think it's a bullshit theory like you said that people are using as a a way to justify a backdoor sequel and the the rumors gotta stop there (laughs) because i don't i like i said i don't think we're gonna get one i think it could be done but let's move on let's talk about this movie um what do you, let's talk about Zazie Beats because we haven't really gotten to her too much. I love Zazie Beats. She's fantastic in Atlanta. Everything I've seen her in, she's been great. Oh, she's fantastic. I, you know, I'll go ahead and admit, I'm not one of those people that immediately just shut off that there's no way these two characters could have a relationship. I, I, I mean, you know, you know, we've talked about this before. I'm not, I, kind of turn my brain off i don't try to guess the twist coming right right when i watch a movie i bought this relationship i don't think there's any reason these two couldn't have legitimately been a couple i mean people are like look at him look at her there's no way these two of course this is fake you know of course this is on his head i like their relationship in this movie and i'm fine with it being you know all in his head that's totally fine i like the you know, the little end result of that. But, you know, where did you sit when you first saw this movie? Did you buy this relationship or did you call bullshit immediately? Um, I didn't call bullshit immediately, but I was kind of like, mm, seems like a stretch, but, you know, whatever. I'll buy it. Sure. Yeah. Um, but when the twists kind of happened i was like okay yeah no that does make a lot more sense i'm not gonna lie (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah um although like the twist was a little obvious um like i did kind of see it coming like Mm -hmm. when the reveal happened i was like that makes more sense and yeah retrospectively yeah like i wasn't like oh my god she like it was all in his head i was like that makes a lot more sense than them being together. I think the part that kind of, you know, put me on edge of like, maybe this isn't how it's supposed to be is when um, they're on their date and Arthur's looking at that uh, newspaper article that says, you know, subway killings, blah, blah, blah. And she goes, I think that guy's a hero. Fuck him. And I was like, mm, yeah, it's a little, yeah, thou doth protest too much kind of thing going on there. Right, but, right, right. Um, And then. Very interestingly, uh, Todd Phillips decided to take out a scene that uh, would have answered a lot of people's questions. There's a lot of people wondering, does uh, Arthur kill her when he's in her apartment? And I've always been on the side of no, because he doesn't have a reason to. Even in her head, you know, whenever he doesn't kill, um, not Randall, who's the other one? Uh, The the little person that he... The short fellow? Yeah, Gary. When he, you know, he's like, Gary, you've always been good to me, and he lets him go. I felt that was the same way, even if it was a faux pas relationship, you know. Um, but yeah, uh, Todd Phillips apparently took out a scene that uh, proved that he, he didn't kill her, that she, she is reacting when all the riots and everything start happening. So she... Interesting. Let's put it into that theory. She's alive. Which, I mean, yes, this character is the anti-hero. You're not supposed to, you know, uh, identify with him. And I think Joaquin Phoenix does a really good job of making this character unidentifiable. Like, there's not really much you can latch onto as to the character of Arthur and him being a good guy in any way. But there would be no reason for him to kill her at all. Um, that being said, uh, you know, there is a lot of amb- ambiguity in this movie. Um, I do like that we kind of get an origin story for Arthur, but then... We also kind of don't because we find out, you know, at the end or towards the end, the truth about uh, his mom 
and that he was adopted and abused. But then, of course, we don't find out who is adopted from. So we do still have that little bit of air of mystery. Um, man, my heart just fucking shatters during that reveal. Watching Joaquin Phoenix go through that laughing fit. And then we get the flashbacks of his his uh, younger mom being interviewed. And they're like, you know, we found your son tied to a radiator with brain trauma. It's it's a lot. It's a lot, man. It is, And then, of course, the actress that's playing um, young Penny when she's just like, you know, he's always been a great boy. He's always been so happy. Oh, uh, it's, it's a great, it's a good movie. <laughs> this is a good movie. Yeah. You, know, uh, you want to talk about the cinematography a little bit? Yes. This because movie looks amazing. Lawrence, is it sure? Share? S H E R. I think it's share. That Lawrence share. Motherfucker came out of nowhere with this yeah. movie. Cause have yes. you looked at like his other filmography? I have not, but why don't we look at it it's, real quick together? So, all right, I'm going to go down the list, okay? Okay. So, I'm going to name bigger films that he's done. So, Joker. Mm-hmm. Um, Godzilla, King of the Monsters. That movie is pretty... From what I remember, it has some great shots in it. Like, War for Dogs. what it is, for what it is, that movie looks awesome. <laughs> okay. War Dogs. Um, no, that's wish the... I w- um, that's the uh, Miles Teller jo- and Jonah, Jonah Hill. Hill. Yeah, Miles Teller. Uh, Wish I Was Here, a Zach Braff film. Um, the Hangover, th- Hangover Three, The Dictator, Hangover Two, Paul, Due Date, The Hangover. So this is his guy. I this love is you, Todd man. Phillips's guy. Oh, this is Todd Phillips' guy. Dan yeah. in real life. Um, the Dukes, the of, Dukes Hazard. of Hazard. <laughs> Club Dread, Garden State. Uh, yeah, he has. He has some he blips ca- on his radar. He came like now. I'm not saying any of those movies look bad, yeah. But like, if you take like "I Love You, Man" and compare like a shot, like a close up of Jason Segel from that movie, and you compare it to like that shot of Joker in the back of the police car in this movie, yeah, it's yeah. just like night and day. Um, oh, he's gonna be doing Black Adam as well. Yeah, if that movie. That movie is that movie ever happening? That's like uh, the new uh, New Mutants getting released. Is that ever going to happen? <laughs> well, I don't know how true this is, but there were rumors um, towards the beginning of this year. Of course, this is all pre-COVID. Yeah. Um, that it was supposed to start um, pre-production um, as early as spring, early summer here in Atlanta. And yeah. by pre-production, I mean like they were just going to be like, like they were going to start constructing sets, um, stuff like that. And it wasn't going to shoot until like next year. Like it was going to be, or it was going to start shooting end of this year. Like it wasn't like, it was supposed to be a big, like the pre-production phase itself was supposedly massive. Um, but of course I heard that was a rumor and then COVID happened, so God only knows what's actually going on with it. I did see a casting announcement the other day for some kid. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. Um, but anyway, fucking Lawrence, man, you fucking killed it with this movie. He really, um, really stepped it's up a, for this It's movie. weird. Like, because, I mean, I'm not saying I love you, man, or the Hangover movies or any of that. I'm not saying any of that stuff looks bad by mm-hmm. any means. Like, mm-hmm. I love you, man, is actually a really well shot I, I remember when I saw the Hangover in theaters being like this for a comedy. This movie looks yeah, really good. It's kind of like like it's what like the you know he kind of falls in that same line like uh, Ben Cushions, um, you know, famous for Ozark. He also did Sleeping with Other People, which is a beautifully shot movie. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm not saying those kind of those DPs can't do this kind of movie, but it's just like he really like he definitely went like he's like. I'm going to, he's like, I'm going to do this one completely differently. Cause this movie does not look like his other films. No, I mean, every um, shot in this movie is, it's top tier, man. Yeah. It's all good. Like, like again, um, I think the movie's fine. Like it's, it's good. I liked it. Um, but I will say it's a great, like, you know, the crew was on top of their fucking craft on this. Like the mm-hmm. acting's great. The direction's pretty good. The cinematography's fucking beautiful. Yeah. Production design is amazing. I mean, they they kind of, and 
not to, you know, put a damper on anything that got done. They kind of had to be. Because I remember when this movie was announced and they're like, we're going to do an origin story of the Joker and Robert De Niro is going to be in it. Scorsese's producing it. And everyone's like, what? And then, you know, Todd Phillips is directing it. I remember this movie. I can go out on record and say I was not, and I, like, I was totally against the idea of this movie. I can probably dig up a tweet that says there's no fucking reason we need this movie. And then that trailer, you know, I saw that and I was like, well, I have, <laughs> I will eat my words gladly because this yeah, shit looks amazing. Yeah, I was, I wasn't like, fuck, like, fuck that when I read the news. I was very curious about this movie, like. With everything that was coming out about it, like, oh, they got, you know, Todd Phillips's writing and directing, um, you know, De Niro's cast, Scorsese is producing, like you said. Um, and then, you know, they cast Joaquin. I was like, okay, like, I, I, oh, yeah. I was trying, like, I wasn't like anticipating a great movie, but I also wasn't like, fuck this. I was, I was just curious the whole time, just like, what, like, what movie are they making like, what is this? And I remember like set photos started leaking. Mm -hmm. Um, Todd Phillips beat fucking the paparazzi to the punch and released the picture of Joaquin and makeup. Yeah. I remember that because literally like, and that's genius. I love it when people do that. They're like, look, we're going to be filming outside in New York. People are going to get photos. Just release something. Yeah. Like release, like release something official that will look better than what they're going to see us doing. (laughs) Yeah, um, I mean it's like when um, when um, they did were doing the first it um, with uh, Bill Skarsgård and they released that photo of him head to toe in his makeup and everyone was like, "What? <laughs> like this looks not that great." But then in context, it looks it looks fantastic. Yeah, in context, it's fucking terrifying. Yeah. Um, they kind of did a similar thing, um, kind of when the Age of Ultron trailer leaked. Like they had built it up to premiere, like. Um, a few days later, and then a shitty cam version leaked. So literally that night, they were like, fuck it, put the trailer out now. Yeah. Like, we don't want people seeing the cell phone version. Like, just drop the trailer. Mm-hmm. And also, Marvel, shout out Marvel Marketing, they tweeted the trailer and with the comment just, thanks a lot, Hydra. I was yeah. like, that's fucking brilliant. <laughs> because the movie that had come out before was, of course, um, Winter Soldier. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, if you know the plot of the movie, you know why that tweet's so funny. Yeah. That's brilliant. And so shout out Todd Phillips and the Joker marketing team for kind of beating that to the punch. Because sure enough, the next day after they released the first official image, like they were outside in New York and goddamn, there were pictures of Joaquin everywhere. Up and down those stairs. Yeah, running in his clown makeup and everything. Speaking of which, we talked about the acting. We talked about the cinematography. Let's talk about the makeup and uh, hair and costumes. I think this Joker outfit's one for the ages, man. I love it. I love oh, fantastic the simplicity fantastic. of it. And like, and somebody pointed out on Reddit that pretty much every article of clothing that makes he, up his final suit, he's, he's worn it in a yeah. previous scene, one hundred percent. Yeah, and, and I, that's it's, it's brilliant because when you first like because you have unknowingly seen all of those articles of clothing. Mm-hmm. Seeing him in that isn't like jarring. It's not yeah. like where the fuck did he get that suit? It's like, like you just see him, you're like, oh, that's the Joker. Yeah, I mean, like he's a poor guy, so it makes sense that his final costume would be stuff that he's you know had to wear multiple times. Yeah, brilliant. And, uh, you know, I love too that Arthur out of makeup doesn't look that intimidating he's a very timid guy he's got a nice smile in that makeup man no matter what he's doing he looks fucking horrifying dude i'm like, telling you once you like if you're a person that doesn't slick their hair back mm-hmm. and then you slick your hair back whoo yeah. you get scary i mean one of my favorite shots in the movie is when he you know gets rid of uh shea wiggum and the other officer and he's walking out of the subway smoking the cigarette and you see the one blue tear that's uh-huh. run down his face he looks like the joker man he uh, he adapts this whole different stride he's got his confidence he just looks fucking fantastic the makeup all works with phoenix like he really does that descent down the staircase is true i mean Symbolic in a way, of course, because he's going down the stairs when every other time he's been going up it. But 
you really feel that transformation change so quickly from Arthur Fleck to Joker. Like it's it's so fluid and at the same time it's demanding. Like I love that dance. It is, you know, Gary Glitter's Rock and Roll Part Two. It was an interesting choice, especially given what we know about Gary Glitter. I'm yeah. happy to say that he didn't receive any residuals from this movie. Uh, but I do like how they quickly switch to that score, that triumphant score of him stomping his way down those stairs, too. It's It blends so seamlessly together. Um, but let's talk about one other thing, too, um, in regards to the performance and cinematography. Everyone likes to talk about this, you know, descent down the stairs, these these Bronx stairs, as, like, the moment from this movie. There's another dance that he does in this movie that I think trumps this one. After he kills the three Wall Street guys and goes yes. to the bathroom. Yep, That I is agree. my favorite scene in the movie. I fucking love it. I love that it was essentially improvised. There's something in Joaquin's performance and something in the way that camera follows him when he's doing his ballet through that dingy public bathroom. Well, that... and from what, if memory serves, that wasn't scripted. No, I think he was supposed to like he talk was to just, himself He was in the just mirror. supposed to go in there, like wash his makeup off and stuff, wash and like you know, talk to himself in the mirror, and then mm-hmm. Joaquin just did that apparently, and yeah. goddamn, it fucking works, man! It is so macabre, and it simultaneously it's so transcendent, it's so beautiful. He, I believe that that you know everyone likes to talk about <laughs> when did uh, Walter White become Heisenberg? Everyone and everyone likes to say when did Arthur Fleck become Joker? I think this moment in the bathroom is truly like. Arthur giving up like yeah. he's he's sub- succumbing to his animal instincts and we can jump back a little further too when he sh- does shoot those guys on the train I remember my first reaction when he first pulls a gun out you know because it's in that strobe lighty kind of subway feeling you know when that first guy gets shot it's startling like I remember jumping a little bit it was pretty pretty intense he kills that second guy and I'm still not feeling anything. Like, I'm like, okay, this is our first real instance of violence in this movie. And it, all the instances of violence are very precise. It's not excessive for the most part. But when he, you know, straight up executes that last guy, I remember being like, you know, I kind of winced a little bit. Which is, you know, I, I see violence in movies all the time. I see people get shot in the head and, you know, stabbed to death, whatever. But that last shot... On that uh, that third businessman, it was really effective in making me start because you know it starts off as self defense, and I could feel myself being like, "All right, now this is just getting excessive." To I'm no longer on Arthur's side. Like I have lost my pity for him for being mentally unstable. I've lost, uh, you know, my empathy for his situation, and now this dude is just a straight up psychopath. I mean, that's the point of the movie, but that's the moment. And then to follow that up with that ballet scene, it's I think that scene is cer- certainly one for the ages. It's one of my favorite scenes of any movie I've ever seen. And, you know, something we'll eventually have to deal with, but I think that scene should definitely include it in, um, you know, Joaquin Phoenix's eventual, eventual uh, in memoriam. I think that's a very apt choice for something like that. It's one of my favorite things he's ever done. So, um, speaking of that. So, anyway, the Joker <laughs> might be Bruce Wayne's brother. Yeah, let's jump over to that. God, so, they, they almost fucking lost me with it. They dude. almost the moment lost that everybody. popped up, I was like, don't you fucking dare. I was like, yeah. don't, don't, yeah. do not, no. And well, I remember they, this... Mm, they pretty quickly are like that's not it's not it's not true it's very not true. bold of them i was to... like do not fucking mm. i was like don't james bond this shit. yeah i was just gonna say this is only a few years after specter and we saw how that turned out i was yeah. very i remember the same feeling when i read when you know he's reading that note i'm like oh shit they're they're not gonna do this shit are they and then thankfully you know and even still there is no i don't think definitive answer on that yeah because i mean if you think about it it's like bruce wayne is powerful or thomas wayne has enough fucking pool in the city those fucking adoption papers could be 
fake as fuck. Like there is 100%. no definitive answer. <laughs> but oh goddamn! Like in my mind, no, nah, fuck that. She was crazy. He's adopted. It's, uh, God, because no, God. Speaking Never which, ever do I want the Joker and Bruce Wayne to be fucking brothers. God, no. no, that's so bad. It is interesting that in this movie, so the the pretty much the canon of this movie that I think we can all agree on is uh, Arthur was adopted by Penny from unknown parents. Uh, Penny was not a good mother to him. She let her boyfriends abuse him. He suffered severe brain trauma, uh, and then got taken away instead of being put into a foster family, whatever, he got put into Arkham Asylum. Is that agreed upon? No. Because what, what happens in the movie, the beginning of the movie, they say he got, he was in the asylum at one point. Yeah, but they also show him there as an adult. Yes. So, so I no, guess, I don't think he was fucking raised in Arkham Asylum. So where, where did, what happened then? Because he's still with his mom at the beginning of this movie. So my question is like, what, how would she be able to <laughs> what did he go to Ark Asylum and then when he got out he just went and lived with her? What happened? I don't even know what could potentially have happened in between those years. I mean, I'm glad they gloss over them, but man, it just opens up so many questions. Yeah, and well, I mean that's the point. Yeah. Um we don't like we don't know. I don't really think it's necessary that we need to know. Um, you know, she was hospitalized at some point for mental illness. He was maybe in foster care, mm -hmm. um, you know, a ward of the state, um, you know, right, lived on the fucking streets. Like God only knows. Um, she got out at some point, um, you know, maybe they lived together again and then he was hospitalized for mental illness, got out and lived with her again. You know, he may not have lived with her before he went to the mental hospital like we don't know yeah. um it's not necessary yeah we don't need all of that back we got enough to know that his this life was really fucked life. up <laughs> yeah um yeah I, I i like i like you said i don't like being spoon-fed either it just the mind reels with what the possible uh, possibilities could be one thing we haven't talked about is this movie's called joker and it does have a lot of comedy that we haven't really touched on that much. Um, Joaquin la every time he's dancing in the children's hospital and drops the yes. gun, I burst <laughs> out laughing. That shit is always funny. I I laugh when he puts his finger to his lips and tells that one kid to don't say anything. Like the whole room didn't just see that. <laughs> That's pretty great. I love the physicality of him walking into the the glass door at the hospital. Yeah, and right after that, that's trying great. to be tough line. <laughs> that's, that's great. great. Uh, him firing the gun off and freaking out. It almost had a little bit of a ledgery kind of feel to it when he did that. Like when. Oh had, yeah, a little bit. Like, like I, it when, makes me think of um, in, when he's in the street and he trips and shoots yes. the shotgun. <laughs> yes. Yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Really, and good. I just love his mom yelling. What was that? Uh, I'm watching a war movie. We'll turn it down. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty great. It's like, yeah. that was a gunshot in your living room. <laughs> um, Arthur, when he does uh, stand up, I think, uh, I, can't, I can't remember the two comedian uh, names. The one guy he's watching and the one guy he follows after. I thought I actually had some, some decent bits. The bit no, about... No, they, uh, they were bad. But goddamn, he bombs hard. Yeah. Um, and... I've like I've been to a lot of live stand up and I've seen people bomb that hard and oh god my it's question the would most be, awkward thing on the fucking planet. Yeah. My just question would be who would give Arthur stage time? Like even at an open mic, you kind of it's not just like a free for all. Like he, I don't know, man. I just any if you know anything about stand up, getting on stage is hard. Like it's not just a hey, I want to go up. All right, go on up. It's <laughs> I don't man. I I would like to see. I I guess we got a glimpse of it, but what a stand up set from Arthur Fleck following the events of this movie. Like what that stand up set would be. I mean, we get a little bit of that when he's making his quote unquote jokes on Murray's show. Um but yeah, that would be interesting. Speaking of which, we haven't really talked about Robert De Niro in this movie. Um oh, crushing it. He's crushing it, but I can't help but get the weird sense that he doesn't him as a as a late night talk show host, it's odd. Is it or is it just me? Like it, it just eh, didn't bother me at all. I don't know. 
I, I mean, when he he's good in this movie. Don't get me wrong, but when I just see him, you know, doing his his bits and everything, I'm like, this this doesn't feel natural to me. But I do. I mean, him and Phoenix going back and forth, it's fucking tremendous. And of course, there's you know the stories from the production crew that Phoenix had a real hard time with this shoot that he would you know constantly just walk off set and be frustrated with his performance and everything, but with De Niro, he apparently never did that. Like he was, I, I don't know if it was uh respect for De Niro intimidation or whatever, but like, I couldn't imagine th- what Phoenix was going through. Like, this is a character that a, you've got the fanboys that you've got to please or not, or not please whatever your agenda is, but you know, you know, Batman and Joker, are like two of the most iconic characters ever. And you're following Heath Ledger doing it as one of the best, and then Jared Leto doing it as one of the worst. I mean, that plus what this character demands. Okay, like, real quick hot take. Mm-hmm. We didn't get enough of Leto's Joker to really say whether it was good or bad. <sighs> I'm not gonna, dude. I'm not gonna lie. He's like, I don't have an like. Do I? I don't like his design. God, I do no. not like. I do not like his design. You don't like his damage tattoo. No, um, I don't care. and I, I like, you know, um, what's his name? David Ayer. Is that who it is that did it? Yeah. Um, I like him. I think he's a fine director. Um, you know, doesn't he, make, he the claims best there's a sometimes. darker cut out there with, oh yeah. Dude, 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 do you follow him on Twitter? Cause he's I don't. been, oh dude, you should. Cause he talks about it constantly. Like he responds to people's tweets. He's like, well, they, you know, in my version, it was this, this, that like he's, and you know, like not to the extent of this release the Snyder cut, but there's mm-hmm. a lot of people starting that release the air cut, and maybe there's HBO Max should it. just be where they drop director's cuts of Dude, their no past shit. movies. <laughs> um, but in my opinion, like as I don't like his design at all, but I don't think we got quite enough of that Joker to call him like to definitively say that is the worst take on the Joker ever. I know that's a hot take. I know a lot of people are going to well, say, Mally, you're a fucking idiot. But like, I mean, dude, there, there were shots in that trailer for suicide squad, which say we will. That trailer was fucking rad. The trailer was good. Um, and like, there's a shot in that trailer where I'm like, Oh, that's the fucking Joker. Like he, Jared Leto, white face, green hair in a tux, Firing a Tommy gun. I'm like, that's the fucking, that's comic book Joker. Like that, fuck yeah. Like that's cool. Yeah. And then he's in the movie for 2.5 seconds. Well, I think you can definitively say he's <laughs> the worst Joker. However, I hear you in saying that we don't have enough to really make a judgment call on him as the Joker. You know what I mean? Like, like my he's opinion definitely the is worst. A lot of, a lot of people that say that. They just don't like, they're just like, their argument always devolves into talking shit on Jared Leto. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, yeah, like, I'm not a big Jared Leto fan either. Like, he's good in, like, I didn't mind him in, like, he was fine in Dallas Buyers Club. Um, He's good in that, yeah. Yeah. um, He was fine in Fight Club. He's good in Blade Uh, Runner. Yeah, like, you know, but a lot of people just, because a lot of people don't like Jared Leto as a person, which, yeah, I'm like, I'm sure he's a fucking shitty fucking person. I, I mean, no he has a cult. He gets that. Yeah. He straight up has a cult. <laughs> well, see, I don't consider that a bad thing. You know me. <laughs> <laughs> I like, mean. Honestly, I'm jealous. Um, it, it, I feel I like did, Jared Leto is re- the new L. Ron Hubbard. Like, he's trying I did, to. <laughs> I did read an article how, like. A month into COVID, like in mid March, and everything shut down. Like he he came out like in April was like, oh, COVID's a thing because he had been out in the yes. desert with his cult for a month. Yep, I'm like that's fucking hilarious. But a lot of people that talk shit on his portrayal of Joker just end up talking shit on Jared Leto, and I'm like, you haven't talked about the Joker in ten fucking minutes. You're talking about Jared Leto. We're not talking about Jared Leto. We're talking about the Joker again. Yeah. I do I like that portrayal? Not really. Can I defini- definitively say that is the worst portrayal? No, because we didn't like. I don't. But who's who? Who would be beneath him? Jack Nicholson? No, no, not necessarily. But can't be Mark I, I Hamill. I, it's just Pete, no. Okay. I hear what you're saying that you you want more to make 
to be able to make a good judgment call and know yes, that you made exactly. the right Yeah. But I will say, out of the ones we've got, live action or not, he is the worst. Okay. <laughs> I mean, unless there's some other portrayal of the Joker that I'm just not aware of. I mean, Cesar Romero's Joker is goofy as fuck. Yeah. But <laughs> that's that was what the intention was, was that whole campiness. I mean, I, I, here's my thing about Jared well, Leto's Joker. Well, I mean, you Joker. could say Jared Leto's Joker was yes. the intention there. Yes. Here, here's my thing about that. I if we're going to twist words, sir, let's <laughs> go, son. I thought the same thing. I've only seen Suicide Squad, uh, Suicide Squad once. I remember... Um, Margot Robbie being the saving grace of that movie. Like, even more so than Will Smith. Like, I thought her as Harley Quinn was great. Then I saw Birds of Prey and realized, you know, a lot, too much of something. <laughs> it's not, it's not a good thing. So, I would, I will come out and say, yes, I would be interested in seeing David Ayer's version of that Suicide Squad movie. I don't think there's anything he can do to really change my opinion that he is the worst joker but then again like i said it's hard to do that character it's amazing that we've gotten as good a performances as we've gotten from people portraying that character it's hard to be a good joker and i th- also think jerry little just got a little too into the idea like when you read about the the stuff behind the scenes of him like sending use condoms and dead rats to crew members and stuff like come on man you're like i get you want to get into that mindset you want to be up there with ledger in them but i feel like he let it get to his head a little too much and i feel that in his performance i feel him trying like trying to make himself distinct but also trying to make it a prestige performance and i just don't think it fits you know what i mean i'll give you that um I mean, he's the gangster Joker. That's yeah, his version. And which just... a lot of people, a lot of people were like, "That's so fucking stupid." That's so fucking stupid. I'm like, they've done that in the comics multiple yeah. times. There's yeah. one uh, I can't remember. It's it's literally sitting on my bookshelf in the other room, um, but I don't want to go get it. There's literally a g- Batman graphic novel that I have where like Joker takes his shirt off and he has a massive red dragon back tattoo. That's so that's I'm like, bad. <laughs> but like that, the graphic novel is good. It's just like this weird panel. He takes his jacket off and he has a dragon tattooed. It's like, okay. Like, yeah. so the whole like tattooed edgy gangster Joker has been done before. Like that wasn't anything new. Like, yeah, his tattoos are fucking stupid. <laughs> I um, mean, have they ever done damaged in the comics? Not to my knowledge, <laughs> but... I mean, Again, he was the hot topic big gangster red fucking... dragon tattoo. Yeah, and I'm talking like it takes up his whole back. It's fucking wild. I yeah. think it might be. Oh, God, I can't. Rem- I can't remember which graphic novel it is. It's not Lovers and Mad Men. I don't know. I'll have to go look at it after we finish recording. <laughs> okay. Um. So, last little things before we start wrapping up here. Uh, I think uh, the line, all I have are negative thoughts, has got to be up there with one of the some of the greatest movie quotes. I think the way it's delivered, the context, and then the, the speech that Phoenix gives right there with, you know, I, I used to think I didn't exist, and now I know I do, and people are starting to notice. Like, I think, I mean, how do you feel about this movie as just a cautionary tale of mental illness do you, is it it's a little good. too on the nose is it eh, a little bit but you know whatever well i think I it gets say, him when he, fisted. Dr- when, when he dropped that line the, like all i have are negative thoughts i was like F- bro same shut up yes <laughs> well i just like the way he's <laughs> join the rest of us dickwad i just love the way he he delivers it i think it's oh yeah no solid. i mean again joaquin's performance is fucking phenomenal well deserved oscar for sure well deserved um, but I, I think it gets a little ham-fisted with, like, his uh, line in his notebook of um, the thing about a mental illness is people expect you to behave like you don't have one or something like that. I was like, that's a little too much for him to be that but self-aware. true. Yes, very true. I mean, watching, you know, the uh, social workers say, you know, people, don't, they don't give a shit about you. They're cutting our funding. You know, I, it's, it's all tr- – it's very telling, especially – with this year, like how yeah. we can funnel money into things like, 
you know, the, what we do and not into social services like that. Speaking of which, um, one other last thing I want to talk about before we wrap up, uh, the portrayal of Thomas Wayne in this movie is very interesting because we're always so used to him being uh, this, from Bruce's mind, this beacon of good and like the ideal man, the one to strive to be. And then this one, um, you know, from Arthur's point of view and from the point of view of the citizens of Gotham, Brett Cullen, you know, he's he seems like a tyrant. <laughs> I fucking love it, personally. I, love it too. I think it's fucking great. I think it's a great little twist on that character to show you, you know, it's it's obviously this takes place in the 80s and it's supposed to be, you know, a little bit of a representation of what we're dealing with today. But like, Well, it's kind of like the theme, like there's a small sub theme of this movie is like don't meet your idols yes because they're pieces of shit yes like thomas wayne uh uh robert de niro's character murray murray yeah um like they're all like they're they're just as shitty as the rest of us man yeah just as shitty as the rest of us yeah no i i, I like that little turn and how they try to uh compare I it mean, with dude, today like you know we me and you you know we both work in the film industry we've met actors Mm -hmm. they're just as shitty as the rest of us like not all of them like some of them are cool um but you know some of them are shitty like it's just the way it is yeah (laughs) people are shitty sometimes yeah (laughs) well i also like that it's like you know when they talk about like this rap problem is is starting to spike and there's, there's garbage strikes which did you notice the big ass cgi rats yes yes i did i didn't notice them the first time but i noticed them this time twice yeah there's not a whole lot of cg um, in this movie but the rats so it's when he executes the third wall street guy there's a big ass cgi rat yep and then when he uh when the waynes get murdered Yep. There's a big ass CGI rat. And there was one more that I noticed. I can't remember where it was. I think there's one when he's kicking the garbage after he gets fired. Or uh, not fired, okay, okay. but told he's gonna have to pay for the sign. Right, yeah. right, yeah, yeah. I think there's one yeah, there. Yeah, I thought that was funny. I was like, oh god, that's a big fucking rat. Yes. <laughs> like big motherfucker. Yeah. Like and I just think that's a hilarious use of their CGI budget. <laughs> that and apparently the shot of him walking up to the asylum was pretty much CG, and everything else is practical. Which I mean, it makes sense not only because this movie's set in the eighties to try yeah, and make that, everything. The entrance to the hospital, him walking up to it, that was. I mean, the building was actually there, but yeah. like the they kind of um, uh, zodiac it. Yeah. Like the surrounding area was CGI and obviously yeah. the Arkham on the building was CGI. Like it's, you know, it's, it's such a forgettable I, I love, shot that it's like, it's fine. I yeah. Mean, like <laughs> I love that subtle, like, you know, that's, that's a Fincher use of CGI right yes. there. Just like he used the CGI to enhance the world, the background, like, and you yeah. don't even fucking notice it. And that's what yeah. makes great CGI. It's like, I think we talked on this podcast before about why we thought 1917 absolutely deserve that best vfx oscar Mm -hmm. Mm because it's like you don't like you don't realize you're watching a vfx heavy movie and that's why it's fucking great yeah vfx Um, work when you don't notice them yeah all right uh is there anything else you want to talk about before we start uh wrapping up we can start talking about the ending let's jump to it all right so uh you know arthur gets invited on to murray's show um and he's gone full Joker. Arthur's pretty much not existent anymore. Of course, um, you know, they go back and forth. Arthur reveals that he's the one that killed the three Wayne Enterprise businessmen. Um, and it's interesting because, you know, you can see Marin telling uh, Robert De Niro, let's cut it short. And it almost feels like you can see in Robert De Niro's eyes, he sees like, Peabody awards and stuff. Oh, yeah. He's like, oh no, he's let's like, keep he's going. He's like, no, this is good TV. Our ratings are going to go up. Yeah. Let's go. And so, you know, they go back and forth. Uh, Murray tells Arthur, you know, I don't pity you. You can't just blame your problems on everyone else. And then, of course, what was supposed to be uh, Arthur's nationally televised suicide, he shoots uh, Murray in the head and then in the chest a couple of times. Um, he takes over the, the the camera there. It's almost a little nod to uh, Ledger as well. Um, uh, well, and that pan like that uh, zoom out mm-hmm. on all the screens. Mm-hmm. That's network, baby. That, that is very much network. In fact, like there's dude, actually the third like that whole sequence is just, like we were like 
again, I didn't realize it when I first saw this movie because I hadn't seen Network until we covered it for this podcast. Mm -hmm. Like, watching it now, like, this whole movie, I'm just like, this isn't any, like, for what it's going to do to society. I was like, this isn't any fucking worse than Network. Yes. And actually, um, it's funny you mention that because there is a second connection to Network we'll get into in just a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, that was, that, that is totally network and it works so well, like zooming out oh, to brilliant. that switchboard and you see all the different, uh, news stations picking up the story. But yeah, um, Arthur is apprehended by police and as he's, uh, being driven to the police station, you can see that Gotham is just in shambles. It is full blown riots. Everyone in clown, uh, clown mask, um, yeah, almost like Dark Knight Rises, like dragging the rich out onto the streets, which of course is where we see, uh. Uh, Thomas and Martha Wayne get executed in the streets by uh, just some guy in a mask, in a clown mask. Um, Arthur is rescued when a uh, ambulance crashes into the police car, driven by uh, two more guys in clown mask. They uh, put him on the hood of the car. He uh, somehow the, the the amount of physical brutality that Arthur endures in this movie, dude. It, he is in sh- he should be dead multiple times over but uh he stands up to his adoring crowd and puts that uh you know it's interesting in this scene he was supposed to use a glass shard from the police car and cut um a smile like a permanent smile almost like uh Heath Ledger's character but he just takes some uh some of his own blood from his mouth and it looks it, that this works so much better for me him just putting on that Enduring smile with uh, the blood from his mouth to a cheering crowd. And then we cut to Arthur back in uh, Arkham Asylum uh, where his, uh, I don't know if this is uh, a DA or an investigator, whoever it is, someone uh, talking with him asked why he's laughing. And he said, I was thinking of a joke. What's the joke? Oh, you wouldn't get it. And then Arthur's being escorted out uh, with blood on his shoes. So probably most certainly killed that woman and then we get like this uh which i love it's almost like a bugs bunny looney tunes kind of ending of him being chased by this orderly from from the asylum and uh that's pretty much it just ends with arthur running loose in arkham i guess or at least in some kind of mental institution not necessarily arkham uh and yeah so (sighs) Where where do we, what do we want to say about about this ending? Um, it's I love an it. ending. I do love the little bit of action we get of like the police car getting hit by the ambulance and then the other car flipping over it. It's pretty awesome. I wish there was just a little bit more of that because we don't get a whole lot of like fast action in this movie. Really true. Yeah, um, that that car crash is actually it's pretty fucking jarring. Yeah, it's awesome though. Like for as simple as it is, it's just a little car flip. It's pretty great. Um I the shot of him putting putting the blood smile on and just soaking up all that uh energy from the crowd. That's a fantastic shot too. This movie is just filled with shots that I think are like going to stand the test of time. Like the the cinematography we've talked about is being top notch, but just individual moments like that really, really stand out. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> I mean, the ending you can take how it is. You know, there's people that think, oh, this whole movie just takes place in his head. He's still in the asylum. I call bullshit on that. Yeah. Um, he I, definitely. I saw a decently interesting theory on Reddit shortly after this movie came out. Um, because solely because of the placement of the cutback to Bruce Wayne and his parents. Yeah. Um, a lot of people claim that Joaquin Phoenix looks much older in that last shot. Yeah. Which I don't, I don't really know. Does like, I don't his think so. Hair, his hair doesn't look any grayer. Like he has a little bit of stubble. So he hasn't shaved in a day or two. Yeah. That's about it. But a lot of like, I read this theory and it was like, it's him years later in Arkham having dealt with the Batman already. Um, like having gone up against him. Mm. It's him realizing, um, apparently it's him realizing Batman's identity, which I think it's a fun theory. I'm like, oh, like that, like that makes the whole, 
oh, it was a joke, you wouldn't get it. Like, that makes that line kind of funnier to me. Yeah. It does, like, the theory doesn't make sense, because it's like, like, he, I was like, we're not flashing back to his memory when we cut back to Bruce. Yeah. Because um, he he has like, no idea of any of that. Yeah. Unless like someone's told may, him. Yeah, maybe he read in a newspaper in the asylum that Bruce Wayne's parents were killed. Like, maybe, and... I don't know. He's connected. I don't know. I thought it was an interesting theory. It doesn't really make sense, but I thought it was, I was like, oh, that's cute. Yeah. I mean, I think the joke is everything that happened. (laughs) I mean, he even says when he's killing his mom, I used to think my life was a tragedy, but now I realize it's a comedy. Like, I think he thinks this whole thing is a joke and no one else is going to get that. Like his, the joke is his existence, his life. Yes. Yes. That's Simple as that. A hundred percent. I think people you know, are just like, digging a little too deep there. <laughs> yeah, like I'm. I'm gonna say it. This isn't a a very deep movie. It's no. all right there for you for the most part. Yeah, you don't have to try too hard. Everything is like, pretty as much as far as out. like the themes and all that. It's right fucking there. Yeah, I agree. Um, all right, so we're running a little long. Why don't we jump into uh, prop cop? So that's of course. Me and Mally picking one prop from the movie that we would like to own for ourselves. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tell you mine. Uh, I want Arthur's little uh, card, his little laminated card that says what his condition is. Ah, oh, damn it. Is that what you were picking? I was considering it, yeah. I love that. I love that little card. Especially, uh, please return this card to the owner. <laughs> I think that's great. Um, I'm going to take... Um, like. Pardon me, like, the obvious one, like, is his suit. Yeah. But I'm going to take, um, which, again, this is technically set deck, but I'm going to take the lettering off of the Murray Show's wall. Okay. Okay. Which, of course, fans of the animated series will recognize that lettering. Yeah. Same font. Yep. Um, and I don't know, that would be fucking rad just to have that <laughs> fucking up on my living room wall, like, the Murray Show. And yeah. I could, I don't know. Speaking of, uh, I couldn't spell my own name with it, but no. I could get close. You get the M at least for your, in the your a. initial, yeah. And there's um, an there's uh nope there's no I there's an E, yeah. Um, hell, son of a bitch. So funny, funny you mentioned the the suit and everything. Um, I remember when this movie came out. Um, that October, um, Priscilla and I took our son to like this uh trunk or treat thing you know where kids going they can get candy and play games and stuff um there was this uh woman that had her daughter there and her daughter was probably like i don't know seven eight years old and she had she was dressed up as this version of the joker but like to a t like the makeup was immaculate the suit perfect it was damn near a mirror image and it was so awesome <laughs> see it's funny um but then i'm like did you actually, see the movie <laughs> one of my friends was really trying to get me to do this because there's a big um halloween party here in atlanta every year um and one of my friends was really trying to get me to go as this version of the joker because my i owned a i own a suit relatively that color i just would have had to gone and find like an orange vest um, and my hair was about that length, like just a little shorter mm-hmm. maybe at the time. Mm-hmm. But the thing that made me really not want to do it is that I didn't want to shave my yes. beard. Yes. That, that, so I, I deal with like, that every year for Halloween. Yeah, I do. Yeah. It's just like, man, like I love having, like, I love my beard, but God damn, it really limits me come Halloween You season. get like four cool outfits you can do and that's yeah, it's about like, it. Like how many more times can I go as a lumberjack, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um but yeah so i didn't end up shaving my beard so i was like all right fuck it and i just yeah. like i did paint my face i just went as a gentleman's corpse okay. so i wore a suit slicked my hair back groomed my beard and then painted my face like a skeleton all right and i nailed it <laughs> um, um but yeah and the one of the other things was i was like no dude like there's gonna be so many because this yeah. movie was a week like maybe two weeks old at that point Mm -hmm. so it's like dude there's gonna be so many fucking people dressed up as the joker like i don't want to do it and then sure fuck enough 
Not a single one. I didn't see a single person dress as the Joker. It's, it's at this very party. specific. And I was like, "Well, son of a bitch." Yeah, it's very specific. Was, You've got to well, get, dude. Do you remember Halloween the year after Dark Knight oh, came yeah. out? Oh yeah. Everyone was the fucking Joker. Mm-hmm. I feel so like this Joker it, would be easier to do too. Yeah, like <laughs> easier to easier costume to attain. So I was like, like no, like I don't want to shave my beard, and there's gonna be so many people dressed as Joker. No jokers, but there were like three other motherfuckers with their face painted like skeletons. I was like, son of a bitch. God damn it. <laughs> the the guy painting his face as a skeleton is uh the cat ears for for women. Like that's Dude, it the really go-to. Is. It's so it's so fucking easy. <laughs> um so a little bit of trivia before we jump to Silver Linings. This is the first uh R rated movie in history to make a billion dollars worldwide. Well deserved. Impressive. Uh, and one last little thing I mentioned earlier, but there is another connection to the movie Network that I thought was pretty interesting. So, um, what's that? In 1984, in December, there was a subway shooting of uh, three people riding the subway that were a little bit arrogant. Uh, but it's um, what Todd Phillips used uh, as a bit of inspiration for this movie. So that was known as uh, the Subway Vigilante, a guy that ended up killing these three obnoxious subway riders. Uh, <clears throat> back in December of 1984. Um, and Todd Phillips and uh, costume designer for this movie, Mark Bridges, uh, they were very familiar with that. And uh, I remember Bridges uh, is on record as saying, you know, I was living in New York at the time and I remember it quite well. Uh, the guy that did the shootings was a very bland person who just did it. Like he just had, had enough. So uh, art imitates life a little bit. Uh, you know, if this already happened, it's not a far stretch for someone who's been abused and mis- misused enough like Arthur to fight back. Uh, it starts a conversation, maybe. I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take it anymore. So he, in this interview he was giving, he quotes Peter Finch from Network, which, of course, is also about so many mentally unstable on TV. Like, it all kind of neatly rounded itself back around there, which I thought was interesting. So let's get into uh, Silver Lining, shall we not? I gotta be honest, mine's a little bullshit. So. I am gonna be more honest and say I don't. You don't have one. one. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what I got. <clears throat> um, all things considered, Batman's a coming. <laughs> That's all. I yeah. Got. <laughs> he's he's coming to fix fix this problem. Theoretically, I mean. My, okay, I have one now. <laughs> okay. He got arrested at the end. Yeah, he's in clearly because he ended up in the hospital. I guess. Yeah, he's in. Uh, he's in somewhere where he's in shackles. So. Oh, I have another one. Okay. Murray's ratings for that final episode were probably <laughs> through the <laughs> fucking roof. Son. See, that's what I what I look for for your silver linings. I'm always expecting like. Can that. you imagine like the produ- like Mark Maron's character, the producer? Because he probably gets paid every time that clip gets shown. Oh, God, probably the right. Dude, he's probably killing it if he survived the night. If he survived the night. I think he's a smart enough character, too. Well, well, he made money. (laughs) Why don't we uh, chuck this up to one of our patented uh, bronze linings? (laughs) I don't Um, know, bro. I think I pulled that out of my house and nailed it. Well, for lack thereof of a silver lining, why don't we talk about something that we know we can do pick me up movie alternatives so a movie that people can pair as a double feature with this movie um to maybe lift their spirits back up do you have something in mind something people can watch after they watch joker yes okay another classic de niro film meet the parents Ooh, i love dude i'm not gonna lie i watched that like Probably I don't know within the past year or so. Mm-hmm. Me too. It holds. It holds up. It's, it's still kind of fun. It's hilarious. I I actually, loved wait, that I movie. watched. I actually I watched it. I was at because it was on cable. I watched it when I was at home in Indiana over Christmas. I think. Oh. Um. Yeah, dude. Like it's still a fun movie. De Niro's fucking hilarious in that movie. Yes, he is. Um. It's funny. I was actually watching um a Bill Burr stand up special recently. He mentions. Like uh, people that have to get in shape for movies and how they complain about it. And he's like, dude, yeah. Ben Stiller has abs and meet the parents. He didn't need to, but he just knew he was going to have to take his shirt off. So he got <laughs> fucking abs. 
So which is I very mean, true. Hey, good for him, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so my pick me up movie alternative is another uh, Todd Phillips movie, actually, and a movie I haven't seen in a long time, but I remember liking at the time. I'm gonna go with Old School. Just oh shit! Get, yeah. get you back into where Todd that's Phillips is known from. That's a classic. From. That's a classic. Yeah, Todd Phillips is known well, for dude, his comedy. That's, so that's something I want to mention. Like some of these like comedy directors, mainly Todd Phillips and um, wow, I just spaced on his fucking name. Um, Big Short, Vice. Oh, uh, Adam McKay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, you know, he came up directing Anchorman, Talladega mm-hmm. Nights, which is mm-hmm. a perfect movie. Yep. Um, the other guys. Mm-hmm. Like, some of these big, I mean, fucking Jordan Peele. Like, look yeah. at these, some of these comedy directors that go on to make some great fucking movies. Like, honestly, right now, like, the past few years, if Adam McKay's name's on it, like, I'm in. Like, yes. I love the big short. I fucking love Vice so Vice much. Vice is great. Um, he's a producer, him and Will Ferrell both produced Succession, which if you haven't watched it is one of the best shows HBO's ever produced. Mm -hmm. It's, um, like it's, you know, the, in my opinion, it's probably the best show airing currently. I mean, it's, it's season, it's third season's coming up. Hopefully, Mm -hmm. um, they're supposedly writing it. Who knows when it will shoot because of COVID, but goddamn, like dude, Adam McKay is crushing it. I mean, Todd Phillips, you know. No one saw him making like if you had like after fucking Hangover two or three came three. Out, like Hangover two hang, Hangover two is really bad too yeah um like if you had told me like this guy was gonna make a fucking deep character study of the Joker a few years down the line I would have been like shut shut up no you're an <laughs> idiot I mean but, there is that uh that and I mean adage. Jordan Peele like dude like look at his fucking like. Mm-hmm. Get Out is fucking damn near perfect. Um, mm-hmm. Us was good. Like, I don't think it's as good as Get Out. But, no, you know, I enjoyed here. Us. I enjoyed Us for what it was. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and he's fucking, and like, you know, he's producing that Candyman remake, mm-hmm. which the uh, that, that trailer looks fucking great. Shout yep. out my man Yaya, dude. He's gonna, he's about to have a hella career, dude. Yeah, I hope after, so. He was fantastic in Watchmen. Watchmen. Yeah. And, yeah, dude, like, mm, I'm psyched. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's the old adage that if you're good at comedy, you can definitely do drama, and we're starting to see that with these comedic yeah, directors. Comedy's hard. Comedy's comedy very is hard. Fucking hard. Very hard. Um. So, lastly, do you recommend this movie? Yes. Okay. To uh, situational. Oh, okay. Like, I'm not. I'm not going to recommend this to every one of my friends. Like, um, she might give me shit for calling her out, but um, our network guest jenny <laughs> um a good friend jenny lee i was just texting her earlier because i got her to watch the show dark that german netflix show which you don't watch you should watch it it mm-hmm. gives me a headache thinking about it but <laughs> god damn it it's great mm-hmm. um i know i don't think she ever watched i think she refused to even watch this movie <laughs> I mean, that's that's um, fair. So I probably wouldn't recommend it to her. I think I told her, I was like, just go fucking watch it. I don't think she ever did. Yeah. Um, Jenny, if you're listening to this, if I'm wrong, text me about it. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure you never watch this movie because you refuse to. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I would say, yeah, I, I, I recommend it. Uh, it's, it is an interesting look at... The uh, the ramif- ramifications of like mental illness gone unchecked, um, and you know lack of proper health care and s- social resources, etc. Um, I also just think this is one of those movies that like you have to recognize it for its achievements in filmmaking. Like this is one of those movies. Take away the context, just see it as a movie. It's I think it's an important movie for filmmakers or film enthusiast to see regardless of whether or not you think you can handle the subject matter you know what i mean like it's just i think this will you know maybe not anytime soon but i do think this movie has some film school you know like here's how to do such and such you know written into it like you know jaws you've got how to do you know hide the monster as much as possible hitchcock here's how to do camera work etc i think this movie's got some of that stuff in there I, I really do. So, plus, I mean, Joaquin acts the fuck out of it, and it looks amazing. You know, <clears throat> all the stuff we've already said. So, yes, I do recommend it. So, cool. Uh, that's it for, for this week for the Silver Linings. Thank you for uh, listening, everyone. 
Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe, rate, rank, uh, all that good stuff. Follow us on social media. Let's just jump into real quick what our clue for next week is going to be. So this is interesting. Um, this episode and our next three, we're doing something a little different where this episode and next week's episode, we're doing back to back my picks. And then the following two will be Mally's picks. And uh, my clue for next week is uh, this was a good superhero comic book-ish movie. Next week's is a bad version. And my only other clue for that would be... (laughs) (laughs) My only other clue for that would be uh, don't look directly into fluorescent bulbs. Just not a good idea ever. And that's it. That's my clue for next week. So we'll find out what that is next Monday. Uh, yeah. Anything else you want to talk about, Mally, before we go for the week? I think that's it for me, Haas. And until next week, as always, you Excelsior. Get what you fucking deserve. Excelsior. 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 Oh. Look it up. Oh.